Well, if you're feeling kind of down and you need some inspiration to remember who you are, I am a 21st century superhuman, and I know that the answers are inside. Hi there, I'm Carrie Kirstar Ellis, author of the 21st Century Superhuman book series. And today I'm here with Marek and we are talking about our keto journey. This is part two. And why in the heck would anybody even want to go on a keto journey? You know, I have people say to me, oh yeah, I tried that a long time ago and blah, 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 blah. But it was really in a wonderful 80 year old chiropractor who's in super good health, um, who encouraged us to because he knew what health situations we were dealing with, which we talked about in the last video. And then we just decided to go for it. We listened actually to some videos by Dr. Ken Berry, and those really laid it out. He actually went from keto to carnivore, which I'm not going to carnivore. You're doing keto with some carnivore in it. So we really decided that it was something we felt could help us. And we kind of went all out. So what did we, what, from your perspective, what did we do? Well, that's what we did. We talked about last time was why we did it, which was health reasons uh, right. for me, even because I went from, um, from uh, processed, I went from processed to, you know, regular eating, regular, if you will, to uh, vegetarian but I still had my prostate issues, which was the main one for me. Other ones were vitality levels low, energy levels low, uh, mental awareness, brain fog, all this, that, all that stuff was just very intense in my life. And it, I really did not like the way I was living. So that was the why. And then uh, the Ken Berry videos, the, the, he has a section on prostate. Right. And the main one that got my attention that caused me to burn the ships and go all in was uh, the the main reason for prostate imbalance in men, he said, was the hormone insulin. Right. The imbalances in the hormone insulin. Right. And that by eating keto, uh, which is taking the body into burning fats instead of the system of burning sugars, Right, uh, which is what the regular diet is, which is all the carbohydrates, all the sugars. I was I was sugar addicted, so that caused me to burn the ships. I mean, he said you can get eighty percent improvement by going keto, eighty percent improvement on the prostate, and uh, so I said let's do it, and uh, and that's when you decided to clean out the kitchen. And that's what burning the ships is all about. When you, I said, what does burning the ships mean? And he said, oh, you know, this guy, one of the ancient captains went to the Americas or wherever, and he burned the ships so his guys couldn't leave. Well, we burned when the ships. Cortez, yep. When Cortez arrived in the Americas, he burnt his ships so that his men would be committed. That's amazing. And so what we, you and I decided to do was clean our kitchen, right. take out all the carbs, all the sugar stuff, uh, and not even that much sugar, because once we went vegetarian, I had gotten off sugars. But I was still doing carbs. So right. my tortillas, beans, rice, chips, the tortilla and, chips, that became and, my, you know, I thought it was okay um, yeah. eating, eating that because it was vegetarian or it was okay to eat. It's really what we called healthy food for a long time. And this is a shift in our thinking. Um, and, and again, as I said, I have been a vegetarian, vegan, vegetarian, all raw, all different degrees of it for a really 50 years. I mean, decades and decades. That's a long time. Of, that's a long time. And um, a so, lifetime. yeah, and, and these are all foods that we have really considered healthy, rice, beans, potatoes, et cetera, except the problem is, especially in a day when we're over consuming, all of those carbs tend to push our insulin levels so that they're up really high. And then the body gets into insulin resistance. I just heard a really cool thing today about the bears go out into the woods and they eat berries and they eat 
sweet things, honey, they raid the bees and eat the honey. And what they are doing is raising their insulin levels so that they can build a bunch of fat so that they can hibernate through the winter and they can survive and their body will, th will live on that fat. But then once that fat gets eaten up in spring, they go out and they're not really eating the sweet things at that point. They're back to eating salmon and whatever their other more um, protein types of foods are. So There's even that stuff. Very and I, interesting. Yeah. And even with the idea of keto, I don't want to discourage vegetarianism because in my heart, that's really true for me also. And uh, we'll talk more about that in the, the series as we produce it. But um, I just believe that if we can also be a vegetarian and be leaning more towards keto, be doing less carbs and more proteins. We just have to, there's an art of doing that and how do we do it? Uh, although at this point I am eating some fish and I'm eating some dairy and it feels really good to my body. So we burned the ships, which meant we, I packed up bags of groceries, probably, I don't know, $150 worth of groceries or something and gave it to the gardener who was at the place we were at at the time, who was really happy to take it home with him because it was all good food. Uh, and um, My cookies, I had healthy health food store cookies, my chocolates, oh, that hurt. Um, yeah. But, uh, but hey, we burned the ships. We were committed. If, That's if, right. You know, I was determined that if that was going to help me with the prostate, which I had had for over 20 years, issues dealing with it, um, it was worth it for me. And so, that's a big commitment level to, to do that, to is. say, we're just going to draw a line and we're not going to have this other stuff in our house anymore. It took away temptation. It helped us get on that path. And as we'll cover in future series um, or future parts of the series is the eating at home. You know, we don't eat out much you and i or right. ever, not we don't at all so right. that's another you know a little parentheses well eating at home eating out uh how to work how to eat during traveling you know all right. this stuff so that's those are all tricks to do but right now what we're talking about is that transition time that shift the cleaning out the burning the ships clean out the kitchen and then um you know we started keto instantly and and quickly the symptoms the, the effects i could feel the effects uh, almost instantly. Yes. Um, you remember I had I had like watering eyes for a long time. I did too. My eyes were burning and watering, and we started going, "What's going on?" You know, I say a long is... time, but this is a period of days, weeks. Right. Um, yeah. But we. But it be... was it was noticeable. Yes. Wake and we up in began. The morning, there's a lot of stuff in my eyes, and it was very right. interesting. So I figured it was detox. Yeah. That's the way I take it. Detox, and we began getting symptoms of what's called keto flu, which is really a detox. We're detoxing insulin. We're detoxing the residual of that insulin production. We're beginning to bring down the inflammation in our bodies. And mm -hmm. then I felt we're pain the, my head ached up here on this part. Right. And I hit tiredness. I had nausea. Um, it was really amazing the uh, number of symptoms that came up as we were in that and you, detox. You would make us something called keto aid, right? And I actually, based off, yeah, yeah. A, Dr. Ken Berry has a neat video out on that, and I kind of took his recipe and adapted it to us because they put a um, I, they put something like monk fruit or stevia in there, so which we don't do. And the keto aid is so good. I mean, I would just crave it. We would each drink, we could drink a liter of it at a time. And basically it was water with a couple of teaspoons of apple, good apple cider vinegar, um, a half a teaspoon of salt, of really good um, sea salt, a quarter mm -hmm. to a half a teaspoon, I like to say, because it's kind of by the amount that you really need a quarter mm -hmm. to a ha half a teaspoon of magnesium you could use any kind of magnesium i actually was using epsom salts because that was what we had and then right. it's nice to use a quarter to a half a teaspoon of potassium which can be bought at the grocery store as no salt we haven't so far been able to find it where we are but um, it is, uh, usually it's pure potassium. You'd have to read the container in order to see that. That was so nourishing at the beginning. We'd go mm. for our walks, we'd come back and just guzzle the whole, the whole liter. And, uh, but I found later, like, cause now we're on month six. Right. And when I, when I come in from, you know, sweaty work outside or something like that, I do less vinegar. 
Right. Uh, I found the vinegar was really strong later. So I've, oh, I've, noticed, yeah. I've been reducing the vinegar amount in that. Right. And there was also a little bit of lemon or lime juice in with the vinegar. And really, That's right. I've been drinking more water at this point. But when we were in that phase of cleansing, of detoxing, right. the keto flu kind of time, that probably lasted mm -hmm. a month. And, um, you know, somebody might say, oh, am I sick? If that long. But, if right. that long. Yeah. yeah. Three or four I'm weeks, about, maybe. Yeah. Yes. Less and it, and it was, but it was yeah. a good process and we knew what was going on. It wasn't like, oh, you know, what is this? Am I sick? We knew we right. had the been studying oh, what I'm we were worse. doing. This isn't working for me. Right. No, 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 no. no. I recognize detox, especially with something different coming out of my body in a different place in a different way. Clearly right. that's something new that's cleaning itself out. And I, I, I'm thankful for that. I like that. Yes. So you also kind of began some exercises during, was it during that time or the yes, first month? Yes, same time, same time. I and, discovered the hip flexor exercises. Right. That was good. Is, we'll, we'll get into that in another video. Me. Yes, too. Another, right. another coverage exercise. Yeah. That's right. So uh, exercise and what is right for you. Yes. I, would, I would call it that because right. this exercise is right for me. I mean, I couldn't even do chair yoga. Yeah, that would hurt. <laughs> yeah, and I tend to I work out with just right for me. So yeah. what what exercises are right for you for what your habits have been in your life, etc. So that's what I right. found for me. I loved doing your exercises with you, and um, and then I also like working out with light weights. I've done that for years, and that was something that I kind of got back into. Um, and we were talking this morning when did our symptoms begin to change our symptoms began to change for the better actually relatively quickly our pain symptoms quickly. and the symptoms of the for me the numbness in my feet and the cystitis in my bladder both began to diminish within that first month yeah for me it was two weeks four weeks six weeks I noticed it clearly in those and then counting in months there were even bigger stages and uh, and so the two months, the urinary symptoms were going down. And by four months, they were gone. That gone. is so amazing. Yes. That's... After 20 years of suffering. Yeah. So, and I think really the big takeaway from this and what it took us to get started, the commitment, the staying with it, even though it wasn't 100 percent comfortable, the burning the ships, um, giving away the food. And then really, when we first started too, we were used to eating larger amounts of food. And we would really pile up our plates with it was usually some kind of protein, usually fish at that beginning point, and then vegetables, and cooked vegetables, salad and salad and some kind of cooked vegetable. And sour cream was a topping that we used at the time, which really sour cream. Um, and we found those aged cheeses that were so good from Spain. Yes. Oh, yeah. So good. And those helped us transition. Those uh, okay. had really gave us something that was tasty and had a higher fat content because part of keto is not just protein. It's for us, it's protein and vegetables and fat. And, the fat the, content. Yeah. and then the old side, which is a whole nother uh, part of the series is the intermittent fasting. Yes, absolutely. Big, big, big part of it. So feet keto, intermittent fasting. Right. And those we started are, that me, right those away. Two, those two are at the top. They go together. Right. We did start the intermittent fasting right away. And it, we, right. it's kind of grown on us. But it's amazing how our appetites diminished. I mean, we gradually just didn't need as much food and it's, the protein natural, and fat. Yeah, it was so sustaining. It's a natural with keto. Yeah, the, the, uh, the hunger things went down, my habit of uh, eating late at night, my, my stock in the kitchen late at night, all that went away. And I found out I was going to the kitchen at night out of habit, and that changed as well. And the first night I discovered it, and I was glad that we had burnt the ships, glad, not glad, because I couldn't find my regular <laughs> munchies. And so I dabbed a, a spoon of coconut oil that first night I found myself late in the kitchen. It was so satisfying uh, that I went back telling you about it. And it was just so, so good. But I did realize that I, I would go forage late at night out of habit, uh, right. not out of hunger. Right. And the keto is satisfying to the body. And so I'm not hungry later. And then I'm not hungry. And that's progressed now 
for longer periods of time, and I'm just just not hungry. And then when I am hungry, oh yeah, it's it's time to eat. No wonder within my window of being able to eat. That's I right. say being able, but it's really a natural cycle. I'm finding it more natural now. That's right. So, that's, that's so awesome. Yep. We're really excited and um, we'll continue this story on another episode. We'll just keep these mm -hmm. so they're easy listening and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Yes, See you soon. Very much. Yes. Okay. Highest blessings. Be well. And if you're feeling kind of down and you need some inspiration to remember who you are. Child, please don't frown. You can choose a new vibration, and these words can take you far. I am the 21st century superhuman, and I know that the answers are inside. Yeah, I am the 21st century superhuman. Now, now, now is the time.